Uh, let's go to uh, Dr. Stanley Teitelbaum. He's the author of, it's a, it's a push, this subject really doesn't apply here, but we're going to try to get him on anyway, Athletes Who Indulge in Their Dark Side. Besides that, I really don't see us really talking about anything that's in your book. Uh, Dr. Teitelbaum, welcome back. Hey, it's nice to be here. Right, so what made you write this book? Was it uh, the Kobe Bryant story? Was it the, uh, was it the Roethlisberger story? I mean, what, what put you over the top that said, i got to write this? Well, first of all, I have to tell you, Tiger Wood did not make the cut for the book. Wow. But, <laughs> because the book was finished before the scandal. <laughs> How, however... Uh, yeah, it, Kobe Bryant is in the book, uh, Plaxico Burris, Michael Vick, a whole bunch of star athletes who live in a celebrity bubble because we put them, we, we the fans, put them up there on that pedestal. Mm -hmm. We anoint them into sports royalty, and then they acquire this uh, distorted self-image. Attitude of entitlement. Uh, well, you know, Tiger mentioned attitude of entitlement, but there's a triad of personality characteristics, which are arrogance, grandiosity, and entitlement. Tiger talks about entitlement, but along with that are the arrogance and, uh, and the grandiosity that propel them to think that they can cross the line, they can do whatever they want, and not worry too much about the consequences. And they've been conditioned. They've been conditioned to view themselves that way, to think of themselves that way, to acquire that distorted self-image from the time they were like eight years old, when they hit that first home right. run. Believe you could take the penalty shot, believe you could take the penalty kick, want to take that free throw. If you don't want all those three things, you're never going to achieve anything in sports. So you believe that you can pull anything off. You believe you can do right. what you want in clubs. You believe you can drink and drive and not get pulled over. Exactly right. And, and so it cuts both ways. And so Tiger believed that he could do everything and anything and that he would be invincible. And you know, you also, uh, when you live in a celebrity bubble, that bubble can burst at some point. Now, Jim Madrino is his home with a lot of you. It's the arrogance yeah. that you bring to this show. <laughs> the is hubris. You've been conditioned. <laughs> <laughs> hubris. A yeah. Now you've got to Google something else. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, doctor, I guess, uh, first thing, how do you explain the Cal Ripkins of the world? How do you explain the Dale Murphys of the world? How do you explain the ones that do keep it between uh, the lines and, and are somewhat humble sure. when it comes to the interview? Sure. There, there are the Ripkins and the... And are they the, the exception? I think they are. Uh, and, and you could add to that list <clears throat> David Wright and Derek Jeter, yeah. uh, you know, who seem to be the good guys. And, and I, think they, I think they are the exceptions. I think there are so many of our star athletes, many who we don't even know about yet, who have a way of stumbling and falling from their pedestal and lapsing into unexplainable self-destructive behavior. Josh Maybe Hamilton. Who? <coughs> Josh Hamilton. Uh, Josh four, Hamilton. Five, four or five top, four or five relapses. Yeah. Although I think if right. Jeter ever was found to, you know, take HDH or something like that, I think people would just quit baseball. I mean, I, I think at this point that's like the last, the last line in the sand for most fans. Yeah, I yeah. think you're right in a way, but also, could they be also better at uh, honing the message? Have you ever listened to Derek Jeter talk? Does he ever say something that would raise an eyebrow or make you write that write a phrase down? The Never. ones that don't, are, that don't belong in your book maybe are the ones that get the game, get what's going to keep their profile high and their endorsements up. Well, they're the ones that deserve the hero worship, and they should have a much greater following on that level in addition to all, the, all of their on-the-field achievements. But I think they are, they are the few. Uh, I, th I think we're fascinated. Why are we so fascinated by this Tiger Woods scandal? You know, he's not going to jail. There are, there are lots. If he was single, no one would say, think a second. That's yeah, Derek Jeter yeah, all over. I just got to tell you, with, with 16 mistresses and, and that schedule, that's a multitasker. That is somebody that should be admired. <laughs> and yeah. to have that type of success on yeah. both on both. Uh, Absolutely. If you can carry a diaper bag, a golf bag, and a mistress, yeah, yeah, you're, you're just doing something right in life. Megan, as a woman, am I overstepping and making that statement? I'm not playing the woman, meaning you, if I could rephrase that question. <laughs> uh, am I overstepping by saying that he did nothing wrong? The only thing he did was get married? What I mean, well, like you just said, that's why Derek, nobody says anything about Derek We don't Jeter. know about Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter could be doing this, the same thing every night, but he's not married. He doesn't have two young children. And I think that's the difference. He has a crazy schedule, just like Tiger Woods. He has millions of dollars. But because he's not married, he's technically not doing anything wrong. But for a lot of people and for a lot of women who look at Tiger's situation, he was married and his wife was taking care of two little kids. That's what makes it wrong. That's why people are like, 
and number 16 came out, that's why everyone's so infatuated with it, because of his personal situation. Not because he was a celebrity. There's, there's many single celebrities who do it, but because of what else he had. He's under but, the but, microscope the most. But you know what? Yeah. See, I, I don't think it's just about because he's married. He's under the microscope the most. You know, there, there was a very famous uh, Danish golfer by the name of uh, Thomas, <laughs> Thomas Bjorn. There wasn't anyone very famous who was Danish, okay? Uh, okay. Thomas There's a very Bjorn. famous cheese yeah. Danish yeah. down the street. Yeah. Yeah. Thomas yeah. Bjorn was a cheater. Uh, and, and, you know, so nothing much happened with that. The, media, the, the story came and the story went. Uh, he was married. It has, I, in my opinion, it has less to do with being married. It has more to do with he's Tiger, and Tiger is the king of the jungle. Well, there's two Athlete things. to indulge their dark side. He is the author, Stanley H. Teitelbaum, and you are talking about sex, drugs, and cover-ups. Not your own life, but others. Go ahead, Gene. <laughs> and there's two things the public really enjoys. It's watching somebody get torn down and then watching them come back. I mean, you know, everyone was... Giambi. Everyone loved him after he's like, I screwed up, right? Yeah. Or, or, or even look at Muhammad Ali when, you know, he got torn down and stripped of the championships. Everyone was there like, well, he should have done this for his country, should have done that. And when he won the heavyweight championship back, we all loved him again. I mean, we like a reclamation project, and, and that's what Tiger's pretty much got to bank on now. We're going to embrace him again once he, you know, shoots a 64. Right. I, I, totally, I totally agree with that, and I think it was a win-win situation for him to return to the right. Masters. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because if he does well, it's just going to be like Jim said. You know, uh, sports fa sports fans are, they may not forget, but they're very forgiving. Right. Uh, and I think I you, Jim, that you didn't write this book since you're right on the money with everything the doctor wrote down. <laughs> well, you know, I was actually <laughs> ghostwriting so a bunch of things, you know. Uh, for the doctor. A little uncredited. <laughs> but but, but I, I, think, I think the... <laughs> you have a little blurb here called violence in nightclubs. Uh, who wants to do the over-under on NBA and football play? I'm going to say seven. But hold off on that because I think uh, Tiger's basic strategy is, uh, is kind of what you said right now, which is that if he comes back as a winner, I think he's banking on going down the path of uh, Kobe Bryant and Alex Rodriguez and A-Rod. Because if you, if you, they, they overcame their scandals by getting back on the field and performing very well. And I think that's Tiger's best bet, uh, and, and that's part of his psychology right now in returning to the Masters. But I think what he won't reclaim is the likability. You know, there was a time when everyone loved Tiger, you know. Not yeah, really, Jim. What? I tell you, people knew he was arrogant, unapproachable. You saw him cursing on the course. There were people that he wasn't the lovable Tiger. There he were was a lot the of admirable tankers. Tiger.